morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church near Ely. As we counted the days to Christmas, so we counted the days to Epiphany on Friday. And today we celebrate with Epiphany Sunday with communion, stars, and worship. Let us begin by praying together. Words are printed in the book. Lord, in this season of Epiphany, as we think about the revealing of Jesus, we pray that you would open our eyes to see the more clearly. Help us to understand fully the glories of Jesus' life and his love for us. We pray, too, that you would open our hearts to understand that you have made us Christ's body, that you have brought us together as your church to represent Jesus to those around us. Help us know that we need one another. Illumine our church, Lord. Amen. Let us continue as we sing, What Child Is This? Number 145 in the hymnal. professional prayer, we come directly to God, seeking to bear open our hearts, and with open hands receive the gifts of forgiveness, grace, and peace. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have seen the light of your star, and still not saw your presence. We confess that we have been invited to offer our gifts in the strength from sharing them with others. We confess that we have treasured that which is not precious in your sight, and turned away from your most gracious gift. Set us right by your healing forgiveness. Lead us in humility, to stable, stability, and your love. Amen. Know that you are forgiven and live in peace. Amen.
another the peace of Christ. And also,
We have public communion scheduled this morning. We will have time for announcements and sharing uh, here earlier in the service. Uh, so first of all, uh, some great prayer uh, prayers have been answered, and we continue prayers of blessing for um, Bob, who had um, knee replacement surgery on Wednesday, um, as well as um, Markham, who had surgery on Wednesday. They are both very successful procedures. And Diane, who had surgery on Friday, who was home recovering. Good luck keeping her down. <laughs> Um, we welcome our visitors here today. We're so glad you're here, especially on a uh, wintry day. It's even more challenging. And uh, we remind everyone that we have open communion, so all who have prepared their hearts through prayer and meditation are welcome at the table. Any other announcements or uh, prayer concerns or requests we'd like to share today? We'll start in the front. Hold on here, it might take me a while. Well, um, as you might know, uh, George's sister lives in Santa Cruz, California. Mm -hmm. And some of you may have been seeing on the news that they're having a terrible, terrible flooding and probably more rain today with some atomic bomb flooding or whatever they call it. But um, all the relatives that are in California are high and dry and have electricity, so we're thankful for that, but there are a lot that will be affected by uh, flooding in California. Well, Christmas miracles happen because I have to bake kolaches for this next week. Uh, Virginia Savek's daughter-in-law, Dawn, is coming home on Wednesday. She's requested apple kolaches. And I can't very well turn her down, but after dying twice or restoring her back to not even acknowledging anything or anything, anyone, She's uh, in physical therapy, she's talking, she actually yelled, hi Terry, when I was talking to Virginia on the phone, and asked for the collages, <laughs> which I think is so awesome. So, uh, just prayers of thanksgiving to God for that Christmas miracle. Well, being Epiphany Sunday, we um, certainly must have time with Matthew chapter 2, the beginning verses. When we hear of the Magi um, coming uh, and visiting Jesus with their gifts. And also we'll have a second scripture passage this morning from the Psalms that talk about um, blessings upon a king, uh, as well as blessings of the king. And so this is a good day to think about how... Those from afar came to Jesus and discovered God in this incredible way and what it means to truly be a king. Let us begin. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, um, Herod inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born, and they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, 
they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then, he, then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt, I have called my son. And Psalm 72 today, it's titled A Prayer for Guidance and Support for the King, and it's attributed to Solomon, King Solomon. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish, and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring him gifts. May all kings fall down before him all nations give him service, for he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all day long. May there be an abundance of grain in the land, may it wave on the tops of the mountains, may its fruit be like Lebanon, and may people blossom in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever, his fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him, may they pronounce him happy, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We begin today with camels. So I've never ridden a camel. I know a couple of us here have. I won't make you raise your hand, but I know it is so. I have ridden an elephant twice, <laughs> once when I was a little girl, and the circus came to Waterloo, and they had a very old elephant lumbering step after step, going in a circle, but for a kid, it was so exciting. I didn't really see the injustice of it all or the suffering of it all. I was just too excited. The second time I rode an elephant was, Daniel and I rode an elephant in Thailand. And that was just gorgeous. It was an elephant park. And it was a beautiful place and a graceful elephant. And it was lovely and it was fun. It's a little um, wavy. 
<laughs> from side to side. We hoped that the, um, that the little uh, cart, little bench was um, attached firmly enough. I, after that experience, I'm not sure that I would want to ride a camel because camels are ornery and they spit and they bite and they run and they, they do good work. They travel long distances, they're able to carry loads, but I don't know, sounds a little daunting. This morning we start with camels because the message today is framed by a story. And this is a story about a king of Balkh, which is in the region of Afghanistan in the northern portion. And this king was named Abraham ibn Adam. And Abraham was a very wealthy king. And at the time, he was not only wealthy financially, but he was also spiritually wealthy, seeking to understand. And one night he was roused from his sleep by a fearful thumping on the roof above his bed. And he shouted, who's there? And a voice came and said, a friend, I've lost my camel. And he was perturbed by this so-called friend. And he screamed, you fool, are you looking for a camel on the roof? And the voice from the roof answered, you fool, are you looking for God in silk? clothing and lying on a gold bed? And he took that to heart and realized this was a true friend. And he was filled with remorse and sorrow and shame and rededicated his search and his faith for the rest of his earthly life. And today, as we have on Epiphany Sunday, the question, where are you looking for God? I think we realize that we have each looked for God in very many different places, intentionally and unintentionally. Where were the Magi looking for God? In verse 2 and 3 of Matthew chapter 2, the Magi arrived in Jerusalem. They thought they would find the king there. They went directly to the current king, King Herod, whose power was centralized in Jerusalem, who must know the questions of the new king, the next king, a divine king, and Herod did not want any part of it and was very disgusted by the whole thing. The Magi were outspoken and honest, and Herod was, um, uh, tr was trying to trick them and trying to deceive them into doing his own bidding. Go, go find this new king, he said, and I will worship too. But he had no such intention. The Magi followed the star looking for a divine king and thought Jerusalem must be the place, but it was just down the road, Bethlehem. In today's geography, we would call it a suburb of the city. Just a little bit. A town called Bethlehem, meaning house of bread. It was a farming community. And they had a special place in the tradition of uh, the scriptures in the tradition of the land, Bethlehem was connected always to royalty. It was a birthplace of kings. And Herod, who was made aware of this history again by consulting with his scribes and professionals, he realized this may be a serious threat because from Bethlehem a new king would rise. And he, Herod Trembles, who was the most, one of the most powerful men around, in the city of Jerusalem, but he trembles at the threat to his own security. So the Magi pack up and head toward Bethlehem. Yes, they were looking for a new king, but even more important, they were looking for something divine. And when they find Jesus in a humble setting as a very, very young person, a baby or a young child, they do not hesitate. They do not criticize, condemn, or um, comment. They just bow down and worship, and they offer some fantastic gifts. And again, we hear in this story the power of a dream which changes the course of life. Instead of going back to Herod, which is exactly what they were planning to do, they go back to their own country by a different way, as if they too are fugitives from Herod's wrath. They were indeed doubly blessed. They made it to Jesus, and then they made it home safely. 
Verse 13 begins when they disappear into the night, as mysteriously as they came. And now, one of Matthew's favorite characters reappears again. Characters that we were watching so closely during Advent. Angels. An angel of the Lord then appears again to Joseph. Consider his frame of mind. He's just happy the baby has arrived. They found a place to kind of settle in. They're in a house. Um, his wife has just given uh, birth. They're settling in. He's thinking, okay, we're just going to stay put for a while. We are going to figure this out, and we are finally good. But he has this very difficult dream and is told, pack it up and go. Not even when you get around to it or pack carefully, but do it immediately. They do not have any more time to settle in. And this message from the angel doesn't come with, you know, glorias and, um, you know, praise be to God. It's get out of town and get out right now. Urgent, frightening. And they are head off to a place that they've never been before. They are on the run. And they are underground in many ways, trying to keep a very low profile. Interestingly, these extravagant gifts that the Magi have presented are really truly wise, for they have two very important um, aspects to them. They're valuable, and they're easy to transport. Easy enough, anyway, because they are able to help Joseph and Mary carry through and carry on. Whether you consider them valuable by their um, financial value or their medicinal value, their symbolic value, their theological value, wonderful things come out of these gifts that were given. And the Old Testament prophecy, which is so important to the writer of the Gospel of Matthew, as the family is going to Egypt and eventually coming back out of Egypt, is, out of Egypt I have called my son, from Hosea. And so all of this lands us back at that very same question, where do we look for God? And it is sometimes in very surprising places and moments when God is revealed. As startling as that story about a camel on a roof, as opening a door and seeing a baby in a mother's arms. This moment in Jerusalem of great fear, when King Herod will bear down on Bethlehem and bring great destruction and death as you continue to read the story. In Psalm 72, there is this particularly beautiful and wonderful meaning in King Solomon, who is a son of a king, King David, who's always held up as the best king of all time in the Jewish tradition. This son fulfilling and walking in his father's footsteps, seeking blessing, but also so many of those lines seem to um, describe Jesus as we see Jesus now. He will judge, verse 2, he will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. Verse 4, he defends the cause of the poor of the people and gives deliverance to the needy and crushes the oppressor. Verse 5, may he live while the sun endures as long as the moon throughout all generations. Verse 8, may he have dominion over, may he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the earth. And in verse 9, in verse 10 and 11, a special note, may the kings bring him gifts. May all kings fall before him. All nations give him service. And that catches our ear today. It has an extra special meaning today. This bowing before Jesus and giving him homage. A fancy synonym for praise and worship. For honor. These magi, not from Sheba or Seba, but from the east, as it is described, we picture them. Picture them riding in on camels and bringing their gifts. And our trans. Um, our tradition has kind of um, metamorphosized them from probably what they were, which was Babylonian astrologers, or I'll get this wrong, Zoroatrian priests, 
a particular religion from the Persia area, from what we would call Iran. And these philosophers come, and we have kind of transformed them into kings with crowns, riding camels. And they are looking for Jesus. Who are we looking for on this very Epiphany Sunday? For the Magi, God was not to be found in that um, palace in Jerusalem, in the capital city. For us, where do we go to find God? For that silly story that I started with about the camel on the roof. Who do we have to say, stop looking? Stop looking for God in fancy clothes and in fancy places. The wise men took their time and had to work through the reality that it wasn't in the palace where they were going to find what they were looking for. But they did. They kept going and they found Jesus. God's servants, both the wise and at the same time the foolish of this world, follow the light, follow the epiphany light, and in our experience and in our search, we do find Jesus. There's a very nice writing called The Star for Our Journey by Avis Palmer. Avis writes, we come to this moment we have traveled so far, like long ago wise men who were led by a star. The roads we have taken are the days of the year, and some have been joyous and some full of fear. We come to this moment, we come as we are. With all that has happened, we bear the year's scar. But here there is welcome, no more need we roam. In the birth of the Christ child, our hearts have come home. This moment's eternal, it's endlessly new. God's presence among us is endlessly true. How awesome, the silence in which can be heard the hope and the peace of the incarnate word. This moment's to treasure, to wonder, to praise. Enthralled by such gifting, we can only gaze. How small is this life light, how bright, how clear, a star for our journey, as year succeeds year. It has been another year since the last epiphany, a time when stars were available in a basket, and if you were here that day, you picked one out with a word on it. A star word, representing some thought, some concept, perhaps a gift. I encourage you to pick them randomly, not dig through the basket and pick one you like. <laughs> I also encourage you to think that perhaps the word is not just about you. Perhaps it's about something else going on around you, or something that has been part of your life, or something that will be part of your life. It's um, both easy and hard to interpret. A single word written on a small slip of paper. But what does it mean to follow a star and to receive a good word. To be faithful enough to put your hand in that basket and get what you get. And as we used to say, you get what you get and don't throw a fit. <laughs> May Epiphany be a blessing to you this morning in two ways as we pass around the star baskets and also as we prepare ourselves to share communion in just a few moments. I will be brave and take a star first. And I haven't arranged them in any way in the basket. They're just shuffled. So if you think I picked one for you and put it in the exact place, I'm sorry, I don't have that much power. <laughs>
churches. When the star had stopped and they had seen the baby, they took a new road. When the decorations come down and we've heard the story, we can take a new road. New roads can be scary, new roads are exciting, new roads are tricky. It is time to go. Star maker, light bringer, Holy Spirit of adventure, come along with us on our road. Accountability. <laughs> Our meditation carol today is number 152. What star is this with beams so bright? It's not marked that we will stand to sing, but let us stand and sing praises to God. Carol 152. humility, anticipation, and we come wondering what is going to happen. And with that wonder, let us join together in prayer. Gracious Lord, creator of light, you who guide the sun and guide our days. Today we reflect on the mad eye who followed a light in the sky to find the true light of the world. They were looking for a son of a king and found your son. We praise you that even in our times of darkness, even in our times where we think we are following the light, we don't really know where we are going. We don't really know what we will find. We ask at this time that you bless this cup and this bread that it may be for us your presence, your power, and your grace, and your sustenance for the journey ahead. Help us to understand who Jesus is, who you are, how we can be inspired by the Spirit to be light and life and love to each other in this world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, through the unity of the Spirit, our glory is yours, God most high, now and for never, now and forevermore. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. On that night, Jesus sat with his disciples, and he took bread and asked God's blessing upon it. And he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, Take and eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup. He poured it out, and he explained what it meant. He said, This is the sign of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Drink this and remember me. So when we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim again the power of God, both now and forevermore. We not only remember, we relive, and then we are alive again through the power of the Spirit with us. All is prepared. Let us share in the elements together.
Let us pray. God of light, we thank you for the gifts of the bread and the cup. May we be strengthened by this meal. May we be inspired by your light so that together we can go into the world as followers of your way on the path that leads to your kingdom of light and glory. This we pray. Amen. Uh, today, as we have this time of offering, we remember how the Magi came bringing gifts, meaningful gifts, uh, gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. This morning, as we bring our offerings uh, for the life, uh, the ministry, and the worship of the church, we do so knowing that each of us plays a part and a role and brings what gifts we have, and all together they honor and glorify God. So I want to say thank you on this Epiphany Sunday for your gifts, for your self-discipline, and for your generosity, enabling us to continue to share together the story of Jesus in our community and world. Let us bring our offerings today. Thank you. Um, our closing carol is 151, We Three Kings. Um. 
Blessing the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance and give you his peace. And all God's people say, Hallelujah. Amen.